Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 4 of Rescaled Solar System, and today I'm heading to the moon again, this time hopefully more successfully. I've equipped my uh, probe with a much better engine, much more stable fuel tanks. Um, the, the service module fuel tanks in the stretchy pack, they, uh, they're, more, they're pressurized, so they're more stable in space, so the fuel flow to my engines will remain stable and not screw up like last time. And the engine I've equipped it with can be ignited 24 times, so I have... Um, the freedom to make uh, about 24 burns, um, or something like that. I am launching the satellite um, on uh, on my Triton 3 launch vehicle, and I'm hopefully going to just head right out to the moon. Uh, again, I'm at the pretty good place for launching to the moon, where I'm basically in line with its orbit. You can see I'm about one degree off, but I'll shave that down to as little as possible. I think I get it down to about 0 0.3 degrees, so that's all good. Um, this is obviously sped up. It's always weird watching these sped up because they do take about 10 minutes and it's always like, oh god, this is taking a while and stuff. And this launch was actually kind of horrible. Not right now. I mean, it did sway off a bit and my launch profile was quite steep, but um, I don't have a huge amount of uh, uh, thrust to weight ratio, so I do need to launch quite steep to, you know, stay, to just kind of stay headed the right sort of direction. Um, but now it gets kind of annoying. It probably won't be hugely noticeable, but there is only one reaction wheel on this which is on the probe i am going to start equipping my uh launch vehicles with more reaction wheels because obviously in real life launch vehicles aren't just like dumb weights that you push your um vehicle into orbit they're well they're a vehicle i mean they have all the control systems on board but the only reaction wheels i have on this are on the probe which are very weak i have a little bit of rc actually quite a lot of rcs i have 182 units of monopropellant as you can see at the top um but yeah, I'm just going to push this right into orbit and then uh, deal with it uh, and deal with everything there. And it, you don't have to move around too much. But anyway, you can see that uh, I've ditched the fairings and now you can kind of see the probe. Um, the game is a little dark and I can't get the freaking, the the thingy to work. The um the mod, the, the what is it, that? The ambient light enhancer mod, which is, I really like it for videos, but I mean, I do try to... Do, uh, you know brighten the dark bits in post-production um, but it doesn't look great so I will again work on that I always say that but um, is I'm not sure how much I can do uh, but I'll see if I can figure it out and the fuel tank at the top is kind of uh, the fuel tank on the probe is uh, kind of made of three different ones to give a nice looking fuel tank I guess um, but anyway uh, we're getting up to uh, orbital velocity now with these uh, four toroidal air spikes and I throttle down because uh, my Apple apps is jumping away from me. Um, and these engines can be throttled up and down four times, which is good. Um, well, they can be ignited four times. But anyway, now we are in orbit and we'll ditch that, even though it has fuel in it, because, well, we don't need it. It's a launch vehicle, not a moon vehicle. And this has about um, 4,500 meters a second delta V on it, which um, is more than enough when I'm in the right plane. Um, I built it kind of expecting to do a plane change slightly, but I don't have to do one at all. As you can see there, I just get a nice moon encounter. Because Cape Canaveral is a pretty nice place to launch from to get to the moon. Um, so I'm just going to kind of tweak this until I get fairly low down. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's looking good. And the moon uh, in rescaled solar system, or real solar system now, does look like the proper moon, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to be landing things on it, because I, I want to do more stuff with the moon. I mean, I did rescale the Kerbin Project Moon, and I want to do more things. I'll probably do another moon mission, a, perf a kind of a more perfect one, because I said I'd do that after rescale Kerbin Project Moon, and never really got around to it. But anyway, we have to perform the, dar uh, the dark and the, you know, we have to perform the burn in the dark side. Um, screwed up my words a little. But, uh, yeah, so it'll, I'll brighten this a bit. Um, I do most of it in the map view anyway, so it shouldn't be that bad, but, I mean, I'll see what I can do. Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll just, you know, do the burn. It doesn't have a huge amount of thrust to weight ratio on this, as you can see it's less than, um, you can see in the vessel info my acceleration, and it is less than 1G acceleration. Um, but that's that's enough, because we don't really need a huge amount of acceleration, because we can just do a longer burn. Um, and, you know, save efficiency. Uh, the thing with the last probe I sent in the last moon, which, in the last moon, in the last episode, that, it, that had a really efficient engine, but it could only be ignited once, so it's not very good. And during the burn, I get kind of bored and kind of check out the where the planets are. So I'm just looking at Jewel, and it does look quite good. And they've put uh, the the developers moved the planets around, so Elu is actually a moon of uh, 
Jewel now, and I, I want to go. To, I want to go to Jewel at some point. I'll take some Kerbals there, maybe. Um, and then I screw something up. I try to put a little maneuver node on and uh, on at the moon, and that just messes everything up because the maneuver node system is slightly weird, and we scaled solar system. Um, but yeah, so I just have to undo that and try and fix it. But it's not really working out, so I just basically eyeball the burn because I know I'm in the right place, and I know if I kind of keep burning prograde-ish. Then I'll reach the moon, and um, this does have a materials bay on it, just just for aesthetics, really. But I check it out anyway, and it doesn't really tell me a huge amount. But anyway, we are on the way to the moon, and this is still at four times time accelerate. I'll slow it down when we're at the moon because you know it's nice to take a look around, and we do still have about fifteen hundred meters a second delta v left, and we are almost we there we go. There's our intersect, and we have quite a lot of delta v left. So I'll just lower the uh, lower the periaps around the moon, and uh, just screw it up a little and then use RCS to tweak it but I have tons of RCS I used a little stretchy tank again for my RCS tank because I really like how they those look but anyway yeah you can see the moon it looks all awesome and I, I just really like how the real solar system works or just oh, it looks now even um, but yeah anyway we'll just travel out we don't even have to do a fine tune um, which is you know expected because it's just the moon it's pretty close um, but yeah now we're just getting in nice and close and there we are um, yeah so everything's looking good I can still ignite this I think 22 more times so I think that'll be more than enough to circularize around the moon um, and there it is down down there in the in the in the black you can see it um, and I'll just align myself and this is back into one times time accelerate because I want to take some time to appreciate the moon and think about how awesome it is and think about um, I don't know I kind of want to put a base there but I mean I do have tech life support on so I'm gonna want to be careful I don't want to be losing kerbals because kerbals are cool, and you don't want you don't want them to die. They're great. Um, yeah, and I've got uh, what is it? Uh, the respawn on attack life support turned off, so they will be dead forever. Um, I just would like to point out that I have left um, days in Kerbin days, um, which makes no sense now um, because. I'm using the real world thing, so I will change it for next episode to real days, because it did confuse me a bit. I was like, why is it taking 11 days to get to the moon? It should take about four in the real world. And again, we're performing a, d um, a burn in the dark, which is, you know, again, annoying, but uh, if I spend too much time here, I'll uh, I'll brighten it. But uh, yeah, because YouTube darkens it, and it's pretty dark anyway, and um, I think, uh, I don't know, it's... Just yeah, it just looks really uh, a bit crap in the dark. But I'll fix it up and everything will be fine. But anyway, we just need to make a quick circularization burn. I'm just easing up to the maneuver node and then pass over it, but not according to the instrumentation. So I'll just burn now. I you know it'll be fine. I've passed over my periaps. Um, but yeah, let's just try and get ourselves into a orbit around the moon. And we have tons of delta v and everything. All the fuel flow to the engines is still stable and nominal. So everything is going fantastically. Um, yeah, this was pretty good. I actually was watching earlier um, a compilation of rocket failures, and it uh, it is quite cool to watch actually. Some of the old, some of the really old like Atlas boosters. I think it was Atlas, maybe not Atlas, maybe um, I don't know what were the first rockets. Probably like the really old Atlas boosters, but they'd um, they were the, like the the um walls of the fuel tank were so thin relative to um, the size of the rocket. I mean, in relative terms, um, the fuel tanks were about as thin as a Coke can. Um, uh, a, a Coke can is relative to the size of a Coke can, so obviously thicker than a Coke can, but you know. Um, and when they'd, bre when they'd like, um, when they when you'd see their, them fail, they'd like properly flatten out because um, the air pressure actually held them together. And it was kind of cool, but uh, yeah. Um, and there are just a huge amount of failures, and they also put the Challenger one in there. I, you know, that's kind of sad because people actually died, and you don't really want to watch that. But it was it was an interesting video actually. Um, yeah, so we'll just uh, move down to our periaps again because I want it to be a fairly circular orbit. So I warped around to uh, perform my burn again, just a kind of a two burn thing to make it nice and circular. Um, and yeah, so we'll just ignite our engine again. And um, just bring our apple ups down until we're in a relatively circular orbit. Not that it really matters, because this is just kind of a placeholder sort of satellite. Um, but it's it's you know interesting for learning how to get to the moon. Although I've already landed men on the moon before, so it's 
you know, it's I, I can do it. So uh, we'll probably be doing more of that soon. And eventually I need to send some stuff to other planets. I mean, that's kind of what this uh, series was originally about. But anyway, um, we'll burn, we'll warp round. And uh, this uh, probe's actually, well, the engines on the probe are using monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide um, as their fuel, oh no, dinitrogen tetroxide even, as their fuel, because it's, it's um, fairly high ISP and quite dense, so it, you know, f it goes for smaller tanks, which is quite nice. But anyway, we'll ditch that and just kind of stare at the moon a bit. And, uh, yeah, this um, probe looks pretty nice, but I need to circularize my orbit with the RCS because, um, well, because I might as well. And up close to the moon, it does look a little grainy, but uh, it still looks pretty good, and I'm I'm looking forward to landing on it, actually, um, eventually. Maybe I'll send it. I don't know, I've done it before, so I might not just spend ages sending probes. I might just straight up land some people there soon, but I'm not really sure. I'll see what goes along, and I want to send some stuff out to Duna and... You know, I want to be moving along. But anyway, I was just checking out the module, and for some reason that module had nuclear fuel on it. I don't know why. I think it was because um, the engine could actually use uh, the could actually use nuclear fuel. But uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I was all like, "Where's this nuclear fuel coming from?" But uh, <laughs> it was fine. It was burning, you know, monomethyl hydrogen and dinitrogen tetroxide. Um, but yeah, this is Heron in orbit of the moon, and that's nice. But anyway, let's move along to a little plane test, because I was um, experimenting with planes, and because the fuel tanks are much lighter, it was really hard for me to build a really big plane. So I thought I'd just start off with something simple, because I kind of, I don't have to fully relearn building planes, but I need to kind of learn to balance it again. So this is using really big wings, so I can move the lift around quite easily. And that front fuel tank looking thing is actually a fuselage, because you want to keep the fuel fairly far back, because um, mass is more evenly balanced now because fuel tanks are much lighter um, with the real fuels mod. Um, but yeah, I just kind of see how fast we can go and I lose a little girder. I had a girder underneath that engine because often when you come down um, to land, you're, I often smash off the engine so I've started putting a girder there um, to kind of stop it from happening. But that falls off under high aerodynamic pressure anyway so much help that was. But anyway, I'll just... Uh, fly this around um, and just kind of turn around and go back now because this isn't really planned for anything yeah and you can see on the report there that it had come off um, but yeah this was just you know a fairly simple plane and Jebediah Kerbin obviously is flying it because you know he was like experimental hardware of course I'm gonna fly that that's kind of my job um, <laughs> he's this super badass of the group and uh, yeah I think there's a li you can see there's a little hill there near the runway um, which could make it hard for landing because it's put pretty much flat flat land around the Kerbal Space Vet Center, but Cape Canaveral apparently has a little hill there. Pretty sure it doesn't in real life, but you know, whatever. I'm pretty sure Cape Canaveral doesn't have a runway either. No, I think it is an Air Force Base, so maybe it does. Not fully sure, actually. I know Vandenberg does, but you know. Um, they basically just copy and pasted the uh, um, Space Center in, you know, wherever it needs to be, not make it. But maybe eventually they'll actually put the proper Space Centers there. I am actually interested to find out if the um, if the space centers are persistent or if it's kind of moved every time you change launch facility or if they've actually put like 20 um, launch facilities all around the uh, planet. Maybe I'll check that out at some point, although it will be kind of finding a needle in a haystack or something, but um, yeah, I can, I can figure it out, surely. Uh, maybe I can just fly over them in orbit. But anyway, um, this is a turbojet on the back of there. I didn't realize it was a turbojet when I put it on there, so I had way too much thrust, but it, it was fine. I eventually do want to build some bigger aircraft, and maybe even attempt an SSTO, which will be actually a challenge on a, on Kerbin, because, not on Kerbin, on Earth, because, I mean, you have to be going much faster, and it's much bigger, and it's just going to be much harder to actually make an SSTO, kind of like Skylon. But, um... Yeah, I mean, a Skylon is a thing, or hopefully will be a thing, and hopefully will work, because it would be very cool to have an SSTO, especially for taking civilians to space, because I'm sure they'd rather rather get into um, something that's like a plane, rather than getting on something that's like a missile. Because um, whenever I talk to, um, I don't know, like, I, I remember I was talking to my uh, like parents and grandparents or something about space travel, and they were like, you could not pay me to get on a rocket, and I was like, I'd get on a rocket, they're pretty safe ish. Although I did just watch a half an hour um, compilation of launch failures, so maybe not. Um, 
But yeah, it, if it's like Skylon, you're like, hey, it's a plane, it won't blow up, what are you talking about? Although it's probably more likely to blow up, because I mean, it's got superheated air running through it all the time. I'm not really sure, but it would be a cool idea. And I will be attempting it either with, um, I don't know what's more efficient, because I know uh, I actually often get more Delta V out of using rocket engines and jet engines as opposed to the rapier engines. But then there's also um, the Sabre engines in the B9 pack, and I think they might be more efficient than the Rapier engines, so uh, I'll have to check that out, because uh, they're also quite cool, and they come in two sizes. Um, but B9 actually has some pretty interesting engines. They have some proper fan jet engines, like you'd find on a, on a kind of like a normal plane, because, you know, their intake and the engine are all in one module, and they look quite cool, because, I mean, it's not just made for building space planes. Um, but yeah, I quite like the B9 pack, and it's it's not even really mods, because I'm pretty sure it's devo um, developed by C7, or maybe one of the developers at Curl Space Program, so, you know. it I, I think it would be really cool if they put more kind of B9, to, just more kind of stuff in Kerbal Space Program. Like, they do, it's really awesome and stuff, but maybe stuff like Cargo Bays would be cool, because um, that's in the B9 pack. And it's, they're doing more of that sort of bespoke, um... Uh, kind of the more bespoke, only one use sort of thing in the game now. It's like the launch escape facility. I mean, before it was all like you could build one, but you'd need to have engines, and they'd put more generic things in the game, but maybe they'll put more cool stuff like that in at some point. And now I'm getting some weird car uh, camera glitch. Um, uh, it's just actually the orientation, and I figure that out about now. Um, yeah, there you go. That was really weird. But yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll um, add some of these mods to the game at some point, especially like clouds. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're doing a lot of stuff, and I mean, if you... And it's no point saying, well, I wish they'd put these things from a mod in the game, because you like, just use the mod. And that's what I do, and it's really, it's a really great, um, really great community for stuff like that, actually. But anyway, now we're gliding in, I shut down the engines, I tried to come in from pretty far out so I could slow down, because I do find with Ferrum Aerospace right now, it is pretty hard to slow down without like air brakes um but yeah this is actually going pretty well this has a probably a pretty steep um glide to drag ratio or lift to drag ratio i assume so it's slowing down quite nicely um but yeah we're coming in a little high but i'm sure it'll be fine um well i i am sure it'll be fine because this is post commentary <laughs> I mean, oh no, the illusion, what will happen? But yeah, no, I, I kind of line it up, and annoyingly this runway isn't aligned to the 90 degrees, because, you know, this isn't on the equator, so I kind of have to eyeball it. But that's fine, it's a plane, I mean, I eyeball, like, dockings in in orbit, so I'm sure I can land a plane by eye. Um, but yeah, we're coming in pretty fast, but it's mainly horizontal velocity, so it's fine. So I just bleed off a little more velocity, but still need to come down before the end of the runway. And there we are. We just need to brake, um, kind of gradually brake, because I've got to turn off the brakes on the front wheel. You can see it slowly starts to tip a bit. Right now it kind of does quite a lot. Um, yeah, and there's a little bit more tipping. But anyway, that is back nicely, and this is the end of the episode. I know it hasn't been hugely full of things, but it has been, you know, interesting, and hopefully I'll be going to the moon more in the future, and hopefully planets. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This has been Chaos Be With Tape. I will see you next time.